Hi, I am Dr. Arundhati. I am consultant dermatologist at Dr. Sculpt Aesthetic Clinics in Indranagar and Sakanagar, Bangalore. So PCOS or polycystic ovary syndrome is a condition that can affect up to 15 to 18% of women in the reproductive age group, making it one of the most common hormonal issue or endocrine issue faced by women of this age group. So PCOS actually refers to the sonographic image. That means, so when somebody does an ultrasound scan of your ovaries, they can visualize these multiple cysts in the ovaries that gives the condition its name. So when we think about PCOS, we think about the acne that it causes or irregular cycles, you know, or some women might associate it with, you know, infertility issues. But it is a condition that can have varying manifestations. And you should remember that not all of these manifestations can be present in each individual affected by it. So PCOS, in addition to causing these issues that I told you earlier, can also have larger health implications as well that you need to be aware of. So PCOS can be associated with what is called insulin resistance that increases your risk of developing diabetes in the future. It can also give you an increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease as well also the increased risk of endometrial carcinoma. It can also be associated with conditions such as depression and anxiety. But today I am going to be talking about the dermatological manifestations of PCOS and how we manage it in the clinic. So the dermatological manifestations of PCOS are acne which is hormonal acne. Then we have certain type of hair loss which we call pattern hair loss. So pattern hair loss is basically thinning out of the hair on the top of your head here. And then thirdly, it can be associated with a condition called acanthosis nigricans, which is basically darkening of the skin around the neck, in your armpits, etc. It can also be associated with hirsutism or unwanted hair growth on the face, on the chest, and the parts of your body. So coming to acne that happens as a result of PCOS. So this is hormonal acne. So how do you distinguish hormonal acne from regular acne? Hormonal acne tends to be concentrated in the lower part of your face. So it can affect the lower cheeks, the jawline, the upper neck more predominantly. And this type of acne tends to be a little stubborn and resistant to treatment. You can also notice that this kind of acne gets aggravated or you get a few extra pimples or breakouts around your periods. Generally, when I see late onset acne or acne which is very stubborn and resistant to treatment in women who are in their late 20s or older, it is a good practice to suspect hormonal acne or acne due to PCOS and run investigations for it. Because as we see, studies have shown that up to 18 to 37 percent of women who present with acne this way can have PCOS. So coming to the treatment aspect of it, so generally when you've been diagnosed with PCOS, your gynecologist probably tells you to make some lifestyle changes. So she asks you to probably lose weight or probably incorporate daily exercise in your routine and probably just change your diet, etc. Unfortunately, these kind of lifestyle changes don't really help with managing acne. So acne is usually resistant to these lifestyle changes. So we have to manage acne based on how severe it is and how stubborn it can be. So if it is mild to moderate acne, we can manage it just like we manage acne in other instances, such as, you know, we can incorporate certain clinical treatments such as peels, we can give you topical creams and we can put you on certain antibiotic orally and uh, maybe other medications, oral medications to help control that. In many instances, these are quite effective as well. But if these traditional modes of treatment are not effective for you, your dermatologist can suggest treatment with certain other medications such as OCPs or oral contraceptive pills which help regularize your hormones and help control the acne. We can also use a group of medications which are called androgen blockers which are also very effective in the treatment of hormonal acne specifically. So coming to the second manifestation that I mentioned, which is pattern hair loss. So pattern hair loss is a slow progressive kind of hair loss that you might have noticed where you probably won't have very severe hair loss on a day to day basis. Like you won't be losing bunches of hair every day, but you might have noticed that your hair is thinning out on the top of your head here. So you might see that when you take a central partition, you can see a larger gap 
and there is more scalp show when you take the central partition so this kind of pattern hair loss is associated with pcos and it can be progressive in the sense that it can get worse over time and i suggest that you, you seek treatment early when you start noticing thinning in the early stages in order to reverse some of the damage and to control this condition as early as possible so coming to the management of pattern hair loss so this can be managed like i mentioned with acne management it can be managed effectively with the use of anti androgen oral medication minoxidil or topical minoxidil which is available as sprays foams and gels that you can apply on the scalp is also a very effective way of managing pattern hair loss i would also recommend the incorporation of clinical hair treatments such as growth factor concentrate treatment and platelet rich plasma treatment in order to get back some of the density that you might have lost with this kind of hair loss and also to maintain the hair in the long run so the third thing i told you can happen as a result of pcos is hirsutism or unwanted hair growth so you might have noticed that there is thick coarse hair growing out in areas that you don't want it such as on the face the upper neck sometimes on the chest and even in the midline abdomen so this kind of hair growth unlike acne or pattern hair loss doesn't even respond to oral medication that effectively people often notice that when they are on medications such as ocps the hair growth appears to slow down but it never goes away completely and once you stop the medication the hair growth comes back to where it used to be before so we rely on methods to remove this unwanted hair in order to manage this condition so the best way that you can manage this unwanted hair would be laser hair reduction so laser hair reduction is a very effective and safe way to manage the unwanted hair growth from pcos you might need several sessions and you might need to do some maintenance sessions say once in every 6 to 8 months you might need maintenance sessions in order to keep the hair growth under control but it can make a world of difference and it will help thin down the thick coarse hair growth it can help reduce the amount of hair overall and help you give a clean natural look that you can maintain for several months after your last laser session so it does improve the quality of life in these women a lot so coming to the last dermatological manifestation that i spoke about that is acanthosis nigricans acanthosis nigricans happens due to insulin resistance so since your body cannot use insulin that effectively it produces more of it and this increased insulin can cause this kind of pigmentation this pigmentation is largely seen at the back of your neck on your underarms around your eyes as well and sometimes on the face as well So one effective way of managing this kind of pigmentation is lifestyle management. So lifestyle management such as diet control and exercise and losing weight can help reduce the acanthosis nigricans. Sometimes you might need to supplement these lifestyle changes with certain clinical treatments. So we do clinical treatments such as peels and we can also give you some prescription products that you can use by yourself at home that will help lighten this kind of pigmentation.